Well, good evening, everybody. I'm Vernon Watson. Welcome to another edition of Pensacola Want to Know. In fact, this is a very special edition of Pensacola Want to Know. We're trying to find out why is our young people killing each other. Uh, this show is going to be a little bit different. I got my uh, special host tonight is uh, Mr. Lavender Williams. Hosting along with a co-host tonight, and Lavender, thank you for taking on the challenge. You you was very upset when you heard about the <laughs> killing of these boys in Pensacola, so yes, you yes, got to do yes, something about yes. it. Yes. So, right, 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 right. Uh, Lavender, uh, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you do your thing, and hopefully we can get some answers uh, to this to this this problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for allowing me to host. And as I bring in my co-host, Ms. Delane Wright. Uh, hey, Delane. Hey there. I want you to introduce yourself. We've known each other for how many years? Oh, gosh. Since um, Jaden was about 12, maybe 13. So. Right, seventh grade, yes. Seventh grade, My, yes. Uh, youngest son, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Delane, uh, Miss Wright was his reading teacher. And go ahead and introduce yourself before I spill it. Well, I'm Delane Wright, and I'm a, an educator. I've been a teacher now for over 15 years, um, pushing on maybe 20. I don't know, I lost track. I'm a retired Navy hospital corpsman. I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, I have two grandsons and a granddaughter. So when I heard of yet another fatal shooting, I, too, like Lavender, became upset and wanted to do something more than say, you know, sorry for your loss and send out some, you know, prayer emoji. You know, I'm sure those things come from the heart, but it's time, you know, to move, try to move the needle a little bit. And I'm... Uh, Let's see what I can do toward that end. And this, the, the topic came from a telephone conversation that you and I had together uh, yeah. several times. Mm -hmm. And we asked uh, Mr. Watson to host the show, host the topic, and we have some other guests with us tonight. And as I bring them on, we are going to allow them to introduce themselves. And first is... Police Chief Rando, Pensacola Police Chief Rando. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me tonight on this program. And um, I look forward for a great opportunity to have some discussions and try to develop some solutions and a greater understanding to what's going on and how we can have an impact on reducing gun violence in the community. Uh, too many times, uh, families, neighbors, uh, business and the community as a whole is, is affected by these by these incidents and the post-traumatic stress that it puts on on um, the community as a whole is is just horrible and um we have got to work together to find a way to reduce these incidences and get these guns off the streets out of the hands of people that don't need to need to need to have these firearms thank you for having me tonight and i look forward to the great I'm sorry. Okay. Did we did we lose Lavender? No? Reggie, can you hear us? I can. Okay. Right. Now, okay, right? introduce yourself. I know you as uh, being a, a journalist and you wrote for the Pensacola News Journal years ago. So update us and let us know what you're up to these days, Mr. Coburn. I'm the program manager for the uh, nonprofit student community institute. And uh, I work in what we call the early brain development division. So we work with parents and children who have Parents who have children ages zero to three with the uh, 
impetus to prepare more kids for kindergarten. And as Ms. Williams said, I have a 20 year background in journalism in South Carolina and Pensacola. Uh, so now I consider myself not only I'm a, I'm a father and a grandfather, a brother, an uncle, social worker, teacher. I've been in education, so I touch all those touch all those uh, avenues and uh, looking forward to the discussion. Thank you, Reggie. And last but not least, we have Mr. David Alexander, prior Pensacola Police Chief, Chief Alexander. Well, thank you. Uh, my name is David Alexander, and uh, I am um, former police chief uh, after 32 years of comprehensive law enforcement uh, service. Uh, I've also taught at the college level uh, for about eight or nine years. And uh, I've mentored in Escambia County since 1996. I've been working with uh, various boards. I served on various boards in the community. Uh, I've also worked with community organizations that deal with youth. Um, and. We've also done, I've been involved in a lot of community organizing uh, in uh, Pensacola as well. Uh, I'm also a, a local pastor of a church here in Pensacola, and uh, I'm just happy to be here uh, tonight and hopefully that this discussion can uh, kickstart some actions that will make uh, our neighborhood safer and certainly bring down uh, the incidents of violence that's taking place uh, throughout Pensacola, Scambia County. Wonderful. Thank you. And I said last but not least, but we are waiting on DJ Ziggy. He'll be here in a few minutes. Uh, he's going to be our young voice of the night. He is going to allow us to get into the heads of our young men. Him being a local DJ, actually traveling DJ now, uh, DJ Ziggy. I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. And if you're watching, please share this. Please share it on your social media pages, and we invite you to give us your comments and suggestions. Also, call in if you'd like to uh, call in a question or have an answer or a comment. And we are going to get right into it. As Vernon said initially, uh, I was upset about all the killings in Pensacola. I currently live in Montgomery, Alabama, but I do have a son that lives in Pensacola, Florida. They grew up, both of my sons grew up in Pensacola, Florida. And the constant killings disturbed me uh, to the point where it was such a passion that I needed to do something with all that angry energy. I wanted to know what the community was doing about it. But before we do anything about it or find a solution, we need to find out why. Why are our young men killing each other? And Chief Lando, we're going to start with you. Do you is there an answer for that, or what is? Why are our young men killing? It's, we know it's not just in Pensacola; it's worldwide. But Pensacola wants to know. We want to know about the community. Well. <clears throat> That's a you know a very very interesting question, and um, there are varying answers to that question. So one could be uh, simple disagreement, um, beef on the street, uh, prior uh, engagement or or issues with the group. Let's not you know placate it, but gang activity, and then. There's those other things, domestic, domestic related situations. Um, there have probably been a couple shootings this year where it have been domestic related situations where um, boyfriend, girlfriend, new boyfriend shows up and they get into a dispute over the relationship or relationship that they thought they had. And next thing you know, uh, there's a, an exchange of gunfire, gunfire's going off. So those are some very um, at the front reasons of why it's happening. And I tell you, sometimes you try to delve down and peel back the peel back the layers and try to find out exactly what's going on. Sometimes you never get the answer of why. And when you have an opportunity to to get into the mind of some of the, the incidences of people that involved in the incidences where you can get them to open up and, and share some of the ideas, some of the thought process behind it. You know, my experience is things 
uh, over the years where guy, young guys didn't understand why they were beefing with the other person. Um, it started over you know, rumors on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, you know, dissing in that particular name. So it's, it is a, a multitude of things in today's society, unfortunately. It doesn't take much things to jump off. Why I recently started talking about community de-escalation, you know, being able to de-escalate in the community um, and find some ways of problem solving. So there are a lot of different facets to this, um, and we can go a whole day talking about and spend a whole day talking about another one. But those are some of the examples that I can provide, you know, real world, real life examples of what in in the community, you know, over the last few months and over the last years and continue to happen. So I hope that was um, enough to answer your question, but we can go on and on and on about why, but those are some very specific examples. Right, and before I allow someone else to chime in, I want to welcome DJ Zippy. I know you are busy. Thank you for being my young voice tonight. And I'm going to allow you to introduce yourself uh, to our panel and to our listeners. Okay, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I go by the name of DJ Ziggy. I'm native to. Uh... Are our young men killing each other? Well, one of the things is that um, I believe uh, I, I agree 100% with the. Uh, what Chief Randall said, but uh, we got to look at, you know, how are we resolving conflicts? Uh, how are we managing things that could lead to conflicts in our community? And certainly uh, with uh, not being really connected to education, uh, you're going to have uh, a poor conflict resolution skills, uh, not having a commitment from community and community committed to helping you. Uh, that's going to create a lot of differences of opinions and uh, those opinions of how we should be responding to various things in in the world or in our community in our living areas and so how young people are responding to their crisis uh no matter what they are whether mental health or physical health or employment or or dysfunctionality in families is creating uh it's, it's turning into rages in various ways uh and certainly when something happens and you got a lot of things going wrong in your life, it has a lot to do with how you'll see future conflicts. And when you're talking about things that can tra traumatize people at a younger age, then you, you get trauma on top of trauma. So uh, there's a lot of things play into it, as Chief Randall said. Uh, so you have to be willing to work with people who, number one, knows about these variations of causational uh, of, of, of crime and being willing to work with those who want to do something to solve it. You can't work with everybody because everybody is not uh, committed to resolution. A lot of people want to chime in, have a discussion, but they don't necessarily want to solve the problem. So we want to know what young people want. you got to be willing to listen to young people and listen attentively uh, and not just preach to them about what you think. What about home, do you think how our young men are raised has any contribution, any influence on why they're killing one another today? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. I think we would get everybody to mute when they're not talking. It might cut down some of the, uh, some of the uh, what you call that, feedback. Uh, so uh, Chief Randall, both, both police chiefs talked about the impact of of person to person and 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 it's to me it's it's all the way back to to our our arrival here so yes our family structure has a lot to do with it but i think uh three words came to mind with me and it was uh love hate and work economics children anybody any man in particular boys men who don't have a job you identified through what you do. So when I meet someone, the first question someone asks me is, what do you do? What do you do is so important that affects your self-worth. Uh, some people blame it on single parents. I don't think single parents is the, is the, is the main issue. Uh, some bl blame it on the lack of male in the house. That's not the main issue. I think it has a lot to do with lack of having 
jobs, self-worth. Because we are people who were brought in from a hostile land and and we had everything taken away from us. And, and our self-worth is determined by who we are and what we do. And until we're able to gain that and get that back, we're going to continue to be misfits or people who who have nothing to lose. Someone who has nothing to lose cares nothing about someone else's life. So we have to go all the way back to trying to fix our self-worth. And we do that through education. We do that through dialogue. We do that through reading the James Baldwin's and the Malcolm, Malcolm X's and understanding that, yes, we live in a hostile foreign land, but we have to understand that we're going to be here and we have to survive and we can't continue to kill each other and hurt each other if we want to survive in the United States. Come off mute, whoever wants to talk with you. Mute. All right, there we go. Reggie, you mentioned education. So with that being said, Ms. Wright, you being an educator, piggyback on what uh, Reggie just said about education being the key also. Right. Um, the Department of Justice made a statement. It said, the link between academic failure and delinquency, violence, and crime is welded to reading failure. Like 70% of inmates cannot read above the fourth grade level. And so as Reggie was saying, you know, in America at least, so much of our self-worth tends to come from, you know, what do you do? And then what follows that, you know, people tend to get a lot of um, their value, their self-worth from that. And so as a, that's why I became an educator. But what I'm finding is that kids do not seem to want to learn. And I'm at a, I'm at, at a middle school level. And the creating the foundation for becoming lifelong learners happens before their child even enters school in kindergarten. And it has to be sustained at home. So when we're looking at the reasons why violence is such a problem in the black community, we need to really take a, a long, hard look at education that happens before children enter school and then sustaining it at home. Oh, your mic. Your mic. <laughs> Our many conversations about it beginning at home. Let's bring Ziggy in. Ziggy. I don't even know where to begin, um, but I'm going to ask you the same question. Why you think our young black men, your peers, are killing one another? And with you being a DJ in the club, managing a club, nightclub, you're in the mix with all of this. But so far as education and how you were raised, Ziggy, you're a pretty smart young man. I met you when you were in high school. You were doing roles college and high school. So share with us what you think the issue is, the problem is. Uh, honestly, like a, like a big issue is it, it kind of comes from like, like us, you know what I'm saying? Like people my age who do stuff. Um, like the best way I can describe it, like, I mean, I'm, I'm around a lot of people who are into like different things, you know what I mean? So uh, like my friends who have money, uh, and I'm not saying it's always about the money, but I just feel like a lot of people don't know what living is, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I was just living here, I, I ain't know that there was nothing more than Pensacola. I've never been past the stoplight before. But the first time I left the city or made some real money and realized that, like, I, I actually had a future, I started moving, like, like way different. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a club, somebody a, a bump into me, but my homeboys might be ready to do whatever, like, fight. Whatever, whatever, you name it, you know what I'm saying? But I have to be like, nah, bro, it ain't even, you know what I'm saying? It ain't worth it. Like, we got too much to live for. 
So I think that that play a big role in it. Like these kids ain't got nothing to live for, and they be products of their environment. So like, what you see is what you get. Like all they see, all they big homies like, oh, they they trapping, they hustling. That's how they get it. They don't really see too many of their big homies going to college and and getting good jobs or having successful rap careers or whatever. So like I say, they just don't have a lot to live for. So like the biggest thing with me and my homeboys when I started making it, I went back back to my hood, you know what I'm saying? Like back to where I'm from and people I grew up with, like people I know that have like a crazy thought process and I take them places with me. Like, nah, bro, you ain't gotta, you ain't gotta do that. Cause look at what could happen. If, if we, if we do this, instead of doing that, we could live like this. We could live just like this stuff you see on TV. Like we living just like this. You see these houses, we can have stuff just like this, but we can't go against the grain. We can't get into it with everybody. We can't beef with everybody. Then another part of that though just plays in pride, like plays in pride and like like a slippery slope. People be feeling like, oh, if I if somebody bumps into me and I don't do nothing about it, everybody gonna bump into me. Like that ain't the case though, bro. You just gotta know like when to pick and choose your battles. Like everything ain't always cause for that. And a lot of it comes from social media too. Like I remember back in the day, like my first fight, the only people that knew about the fight, like and I lost. The only people that knew about the fight was people that was at the fight. Like when I got beat up, you feel me? But like now today, a fight break out, like how we live, the whole world can see you get beat up. So people have humiliation and people hate mm-hmm. to take me. Like, oh man, I, I got to do something about that. Like I'm a kill buddy because my fist couldn't, I couldn't do nothing with him with the physical. So, you know what I'm saying? I know he can't beat no gun, but people don't always think like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of it, like I say, though, has to deal with your future and you have to be able to think steps ahead. And if we could, implant that in the people like bro think about what could happen if you did this instead of doing that and when you start thinking like that like you know it, it'll, it'll do something to you like and i ain't gonna lie like i've been to jail before you know what i'm saying for different stuff i've been facing time before and by the grace of god like i got my act together like that's all it took for me like you know what i'm saying i'd be i'd be having a poem boys to call me every day need money on their books need this need that I, i'm helping them with their kids you know what i'm saying like that hurts, bro. I don't. I don't never want to be in no no situation like that. But everybody don't think like that. You got some people who don't mind going to sit down in jail for six months. I don't want to be in handcuffs for six minutes. Like, I, I enjoy my freedom too much because I my life good. Whether I'm broke or rich, like my life good. I know what I could do when I'm free. I know what I couldn't do when I was locked up for two days. I know how much money I lost in two days. People trying to hit me, book me, and do all that. Saying no, I ain't doing none of that. Like people just need more to live for like so i think people if you if you have an opportunity if you travel you should take these people with you show them stuff and like with the education thing though i i really don't know about that you know what i mean like my mom's a school teacher so that's kind of like you know what i'm saying i just was really too afraid to embarrass her like you know what i'm saying on the school tip but if 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 we could have more examples to come back here, I feel like that's what it be too. Like, I know we got a short time, but that would it be too. Like, people, it be so messed up here when people make it, they don't come back here. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't, like, it's so traumatized and so bad, like, they don't come back here. Like, and sometimes you can't even blame them. Like, me, I come home though, but when I come home, I be on all 10 paying attention. I try to get back my time when I can, you know what I'm saying, to let people know. And that's why when I go places, I be so proud to say, like, I'm from Pensacola. I'm from here, even though everybody I'm with Atlanta, Memphis, LA, New York, these big record labels, like, oh, bro, we never heard of that. Like, but I stand on that because my whole life you've been telling me I can't do what I do from here. So I scream every time I go to let people know, and the kids and everybody else from here, like, you can do it. You just gotta stay out of trouble, bro, and keep your keep your focus. Let me ask you something, Ziggy. You mentioned uh, how your homeboys in jail reach out to you. So you have a relationship with them. Yes, ma'am. Relationships are the key, building relationships and meeting our young men where they are. Do you feel like the community and community leaders play a part in meeting our young men where they are? Do you feel like they do that? I mean, I see stuff like this all the time, but like it might have like 10 shares, but you post post some bull like, you got 300 shares or like parents would be quick to drop their kids off at a team party so they can go hang out, do their thing for the night, but won't take them to a youth rally. Like it got to make sense. Like 
you can't just put all the blame on the kids. Some of these kids have no way. They have no ride. They have no way to do things like you have to just set it up like that. So, I mean, I, I don't know what you could do to get their attention. Like, But if you could get them all and gather them up. And I think a lot of it, too, though, we don't know a lot of like when I was in school, bro, so many people used to come to me, but they would be talking so like high up or proper. They couldn't really reach me. So I'd be feeling like they need somebody who's a reflection of them. Like, oh, man, this man from it, bro, from the hood. Like, bro, bro, I used to live in the projects. Like, oh, this ain't just no, you know what I'm saying? Somebody who had it made or they suburb, whatever. If you see somebody who, like, I can relate to you. Like, it'd be hard for me to, even to this day, talk to people who, like, how you going to tell me about this and that? You don't even look like you. I don't, the way you talk, like, people could just keep it real and keep it funky. Like, just be all the way genuine yourself, like, I talk, I use slang, I use everything. Like, I know I ain't perfect, but I feel like that would be a good help. Like, just a reflection of what they see and they who they be around day to day and who talk like them, who look like them, who dress like them. They have somebody like that talking to them that might help them out even more. So before I go to our panel members, do you think, Ziggy, that this panel is able to reach? Do you think this panel would even be productive in what we're talking about? Because you're saying we have to be in a position to relate to them. Uh, like, I don't know everyone's background here. Like, I, I've done, like, a little research before just in the group chat. And, like, some of the names are, like, familiar. But just just off the, off the rip, like, on, on this live alone, you have two, two, two law enforcement on here. People already have a bad disconnect with that off the top. So when, mm -hmm. when if an officer come mm -hmm. around, you know, nobody want to talk. I'm quiet. I don't want to. Wow. I, I, I ain't got nothing wow. to say. You know what I'm saying? Like they look okay. at it, they look at it like that. Like they scared. Like me. You know what I'm saying? Not only the PPD, but the sheriff's office. Just for me doing events, I built. Even though I had my run-ins with them, I built a great relationship with them for when I need off-duty officers to work my events. Or when I do a club, I prefer to have an officer in the parking lot because I don't know. I just feel like a presence alone keep people from doing stuff. Like, if I ever thought about doing something crazy, I see the police, I'm like, oh, no, I ain't, I ain't on that. I have to catch him another time. I'm like, But people just, I don't know. I, it, they could listen to y'all if they knew where y'all come from. You know what I mean? Like, if they knew, oh, okay, David, man, David used to be like me. Mr. Alexander used to be like me. His life was like, dang. I, and now, but look at what he doing, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? People got to know your background. It's hard to just believe somebody be like, man, I'm the, they know your background they more, more like feeble to you and, and accepting to you. I feel like. But I say we could at least try. I don't know if it would be effective. Right. Try to, and then you go from there, trial and error. Can I, can I, can I pipe in just quickly? Go ahead. Go, go, no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead, Chief. Go ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to ask Chief Randall after hearing uh, Ziggy's response of just seeing the, the uniform and the ability or the need to build relationships on their level. What do you have to, uh, what is your response to that? Well, you know, we, we have a lot of work to do in, in law enforcement and each and every day, we got to work harder than the previous day to continue to build relationships, um, especially, especially with the youth. Um, youth in the community centers, youth at, at the schools, you know, the SROs, and even even leadership in, in law enforcement. So, you know, one of the biggest challenge, you know, I challenge my folks is each and every day, ask yourself, what have you done, no matter how big or how small, to make the community a better place? And use every opportunity to get out and be engaging with um, citizens of the community, because it shouldn't be the first time that you interact with a police officer, it shouldn't be a call for service. Um, there's, there's plenty of opportunities, you know, when you go in the store, when you're out walking your beat, when you're doing other things, even when you're off duty, uh, working in, um, working with youth sports, uh, mentoring and doing things of that nature. So every opportunity that we get as law enforcement, uh, should be utilized to build relationships. And I tell you, you know, unfortunately we wear a uniform, you know, we're one of the, the most visible form of government, but each and every one of us are, are human, just like everybody else. And, you know, a lot of times we don't tell our stories um, and sometimes that's 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 bad. But um, there's some amazing stories that come from police officers. Um, you know, we all don't didn't grow up with a with a with, a, with the golden spoon. Um, many of us had to scratch our way 
through through school, um, you know, fall down, get up, um, make mistakes, get back on the right track and, and, and do some things. You know, it's not easy. And, um, and I think, you know, we need to do more of that, um, knowing people behind the badge, because I can tell you there are plenty, plenty of stories of um, law enforcement officers that 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 didn't grow up with nothing. And, you know, most of us don't do it for the money because we're not going to get rich doing it. It's because we care about the communities that we we live in, we serve. And it's about service. And it's a profession. It's about being professional. You know, do we make mistakes? Yes. There are a number of mistakes that are that are made. But I but I guarantee you this probably one of the only professions that when mistakes are made, that they're always come um, thing, you know, after actions and look at it and try to do better each and every day. But, um, you know, trying to relate is um, is very, very important. Very, very important. And um, I appreciate all the you know, the comments from from DJ Ziggy. You know, we we come from two different different time zones. I grew up in Pensacola in the, in the 1980s and in the early 1990s when I when I left after I graduated high school. You know, unfortunately, unfortunately, <clears throat> I joined the military. You know, I'm all about service. Um, when I was um, in high school and in and, 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 and elementary school, I played Little League football. So um, I grew up with some of the people that, you know, made it pretty well and left Pensacola and come back and do things from time to time. But um, those those are the stories that, that we try to tell. But um, every one of us didn't grow up with a silver spoon in our mouth or, or, or had our path. Um, you know, set out for us. You know, I, I never know that I would go in law enforcement, let alone be a chief of police in my hometown. I mean, that is, you know, that is that is highly, highly unusual, especially when I left. You know, I've been gone 30, 30 years, you know, but to come back in the capacity that I have and try to make a difference, to try to show, you know, young black males. I left here at eight, I left Pensacola 18 years old. And I tell you this, I was a teenage parent. My oldest daughter was born when I was 17 years old. I was in high school. Statistically, I ain't supposed to be where I'm at. But you know what? I fought through it. I took responsibility. And me and my wife been married, be married 30 years next month. So um, I, I, I take pride in that. So, but, but you know what? You got to put the work in. You've got to put the work in. Chief Randall, you said you said quite a few things there, and most of what you know, Pensacola does not know about you. And you're right; the first meeting of law enforcement should not be a service call. However, it usually is. Reggie, you wanted to uh, chime in. Yes. Uh kind of forgot my train now with what he said, but it related back to DJ. He said that two things. He said, one, his mother was an educator, and two, he didn't want to go to jail. But he also mentioned Chief, uh, the, the two police officers being here. And it's a two-edged sword because the black communities had an adversarial relationship with police. But on the other hand, it's good for young black men to see two black men who have achieved the highest level in the police department because we don't have those role models enough in our community because by and large the society at large wants us to either be entertainers athletes or criminals and there's a three three billion dollar business in the black community the church consumer uh, doesn't go into sports he doesn't put all his eggs in one basket, doesn't go into sports. He can't sing or dance. His only really alternative is to sell drugs. And drug is a business. And unfortunately, that's the business that's been passed on to us. Uh, Quint Studer, who I worked for, when he started his first business with four people, he grew that company to four or 500 people. That's four or 500 jobs he created. Then he started a nonprofit and created three or four hundred more jobs where where can a young black man go but not working for them and that he can get a job like that uh the church is a great institute but the church only employs the preacher the uh the piano player and the person that cleans the church and and that right there <laughs> we need to have some kind of way for it it all goes back to work we got to find some work for our young black man thank you chief alexander Yes, uh, I, I'm just, first of all, I'm just excited about everything that I've heard, um, especially coming from uh, 
DJ Ziggy, because uh, uh, yes, everybody has a story. And certainly my story originates from number 25 Addicts Court. And, uh, and uh, I was about 20 years ahead of um, Chief Randall. Uh, but one of the things that hasn't changed is that uh, when you have something to live for, as you said, uh, you strive. And a lot of times circumstances and processes are presented to you to keep you from hoping for that which is good and accepting the whatever or the alternative that's not really an alternative to you is the only choice you have. So creating opportunities for young men and women, especially African Americans, makes a difference. And exposing them to a better life uh, makes a difference. And letting them see examples of what success looks like, uh, especially when it, a person that looks like them makes a difference. When they don't see that, then no, Miss Wright, they're not interested in education because they're disconnected from education. They don't care about their neighborhoods looking good because there is no connection to a good looking neighborhood. They don't care about the family values that we try to impress upon them because they have no family values to connect to. But when you create those opportunities for families outside of families, you'll find out that we're not the only two stories of success. There are stories all over this town where people have come out of the projects and have done exceptionally well and they're leaving inheritances for their children. They're able to live, provide opportunities for their children to live better. But it all goes back to trusting relationships. And that's something that's very important. Um, the pressure to resolve conflicts, even at a, at a business level, it goes back to how well do you get along with others? Can you work with others? And, and one thing I can tell you in my 32 years career, I've learned how to reach out to young people. You got to spend more time listening and then let them know where you came from. How did you get where you are? How do you get what you have? And so that, those are connecting pieces. And when they start to understand that this is something to help them and they can see the possibilities, you're going to find there are more children that are going to jump in line for those possibilities because they're already tired of seeing the same old, same old. You know, they're tired of seeing their cousins, their brothers. Sometimes they're seeing their fathers and mothers going to jail time after time. They want to see something that gives them hope for a better future. And we do have those examples here. We do have here what works. But unfortunately, what works doesn't always get the same play as what's entertaining and what's soothing politically. We got to take this kind of stuff out of the hands of politicians and make them respond to what's going on versus we have it to plead with them to hear us and respond to us. And so what I'm finding out nowadays, you got to work with people who are willing to work. And that's one of the things I'll tell you, I'll work with various groups. I work with student group. I, I believe in the, the brain bag that they give to infants. I believe in giving children a chance to be ready for school before they even enter school. But it also takes working with parents. And that's why I, our church ministry is about helping people be able to be a, the best person they can because the first educator is at home, wherever that child rests their head at every night. Stop That's right there. Teaching. Chief Alexander, you got to stop right there. You said something there. Um, it begins at home. But that's, to, uh, that, but that's not to, you can't beat up people at home because they're not able to provide better. This is where our social services have got to work together because there are parents that want to do better. But a lot of times these systems are not receptive to that. And so when it's perceived, I remember the first time I, my daughter was transitioning from a private school to a public school. And she was transitioning during a year that was a bad year to transition. That's sixth grade. So her grades dropped. And I asked for a conference with the teachers. And most of the teachers was wondering, what was I angry about? And all I wanted to do was establish a communicating relationship with my daughter so I'll know why her grades are falling and what I can do to help bring those grades back up. It takes partnerships. It takes collaborative efforts. We have to work with a younger generation if you want to see these things change. Otherwise, so the same old values will prevail. You're right. 
not beating up the parents who are not able to do any better. But personally, I believe education, whether it, it begins at home or in the school, and Delaine, this is where I want you to chime in, education can fundamentally change the way a person thinks, the way they behave, and the way they react to other people. That's why I push reading. So back to the topic, why our men are killing each other, I believe it begins with education, whether you just pick up a book or you get formal education. But reading and education changes the way you think and behave and react to people. Most of our young black men, most of our young children don't understand the benefits that picking up a book and reading it will do to the brain. So, Delaine, let's talk about that, because I know you have a lot to say when it comes to, to parents being involved and, and their lack of involvement in a child's education. But what is your response to that? They've done extensive research about, for example, the adverse impact what chronic stress has on children's brains. It's, you know, it's, it's not enough to say, oh, you're going through some things right now and therefore you're distracted from your learning. If a child has lived in a stressful um, situation uh, on a, for, for an extended period of time, it can actually alter the brain development, the brain formation and, and hinder learning that way. So um, when we talk about parents being engaged, how can I say this? Our community, it has to be this urgent need. We need to recognize that reading is not an option. Reading is essential. And so when parents cannot step, for, for whatever reason, step up and meet their responsibility, then we can pass that along to their older siblings. But until our children become engaged in learning, what we see will continue. The, 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 the poor test score performance and the violence and the poverty and the early death, all that is interconnected. Uh, One of the things that stood out to me, uh, first of all, I was talking to my teenage granddaughter about a program that Chief Randall has, I'm, he'll touch on, I'm sure, uh, about engaging young people in, um, I guess what law enforcement is all about. She didn't think you were gonna get many takers for the reasons that uh, DJ Vicky touched on. They don't wanna be perceived as, as being in any ways in cahoots with law enforcement. Um, relationships. That is critically important. And, and, and relationships is a dialogue. It's not just me asking you questions, it's me listening and, and, and being open and sharing myself. And when I think about the messenger, I'm so glad that you invited um, the DJ here with us. We need more young people. The messengers are important. That's why, you know, you, you turn on TV and you see these commercials. They pay these spokespeople millions of dollars because the messenger is important. We know the message, but the face of the messenger has not changed. And that has to be different. And students, children need to be given opportunities to express themselves. For example, today, I asked my students, what are some of the things that you think we can do to help improve behavior at the, at the school level? They couldn't say anything. They don't have the words, the vocabulary for conflict resolution. They're not accustomed to being asked, what can you do? And we have to give them an authentic reason and a platform to, to and make them feel safe for them to share, with, for them to be leaders. And the well, last, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted. I feel very strongly about that. I think I would have, I think we need to give the people that we are addressing an opportunity to speak and equip them with those tools. 
So if any of our yeah. viewers have any comments, you are more than welcome to drop your uh, comments in. Ziggy just uh, stepped away, but I wanted to ask uh, Ziggy when he comes back, being, hey, being an influencer, whether you accept it or not, you are a social media and community influencer. What responsibility, now I'm, I'm, I'm just going to stick it to you, do you feel like you have, Ziggy, to this issue? Because you are an influencer. You can reach and establish relationships that you can. Not to put any pressure on you. <laughs> <laughs> nah, honestly, I just uh, ever since it kind of came about and people kind of told me these things like, oh, you got to do this. I'm going to tell you, the, the first time I really realized that I was having that effect was the very first time. Yeah, because it was almost like viral. Like everybody, I, I went to jail like at two o'clock in the morning, bro, when people shouldn't even be up. But because <laughs> everybody, 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 everybody you know, has some mistake. So when I first realized that was going on and kids would come to me or their parents be like, man, my son is crazy about you. He want to meet you. And I'd be like, mom, you know something normal. Cause like, you should walk up to me, talk to me. Like I ain't, people always, when they first meet me, they be like, man, I thought you were bougie. I thought, I'm like, no, oh, I just be, you know what I'm saying? Half the time I just be tired. So I just be zoned out. Like when I'm somewhere, like I don't be thinking of it like that. But ever since I felt like I had that role on me, you know, I just, I do try to move different though. Like I know I'm not perfect. Like there's a lot of things I do though. But see, I'm gonna say this too. There's a lot of things I do in my life that social media would never know about. You know what I'm saying? Because I never want people to portray that. I don't want everybody to think that's cool. What I do might just be what works for me. I find another way to make something else work for me. But if I don't think it's gonna have a positive, you know, like I crack jokes and stuff, but if I don't think it's gonna have like a positive influence, bro. I really try not to get into that. Like, you know what I'm saying it, it's rare. Like, people can't tell you around here. Like, oh, I seen bro, now I seen a man get out of character. I seen a man like, no, nah, because it's like, it's too much attention on them already. And like I say, like, I try to do stuff when I can, you know, to let people know, like, yeah, bro, like, I'm just like you. Like, we, we relate in many different ways, whether you believe it or not. But no, I, I'm definitely down for anything that like helps the community. You know, because I just feel like when I was growing up, I ain't never seen nobody like cool trying to help. Like I or like what what I perceive to be cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? I never seen nobody who looked like me. I see somebody who, or you see somebody in polo with their shirt tucked in. Like, I don't know. We got fresh Oxford's like, man, I, I'd have been mind blown if somebody came talking to us. They might have on forces that they just like I say, I just I connect like you seem like you've been been where I've been. I talk to you. But if you ain't, it'd be like like you know what I'm saying? I it is just like this. If you don't feel like somebody has been in those same shoes or have the same pair of shoes, you're not gonna let that person tell you how to tie the shoes. Cause they ain't they ain't you don't, like, you don't know though. Like you don't know. Like I would have never thought, you know what I'm saying. Mr. Alexander from Addis Court. I would have never even in a million years. I just want to say everything about perception of it. I mean, so you just got to get out there more like the best you can. But definitely being my age, you, you can't move on. Because like I said, I work for a record label and I, re I represent big artists all the way from Yo Gotti to Moneybag Yo, uh, us having a partnership with Rock Nation. Like, so there'd be a lot of times, even on social media, I don't even crack jokes about certain subjects because next thing you know, you might have said something funny, just normal. You on the shade room, so you got to learn how to carry yourself. And then, like, I mean, I, I can't just say it's all me. Zig, I got to interrupt you. You mentioned social media a few times. Let's talk about briefly. We got about 10, 15 minutes left. Okay. The influence that social media has on our young men killing each other. And even the music, DJ uh, Ziggy, the music that you all listen to. Let's talk about that. Social media and music. I got you. Come on, DJ Ziggy. Um, like I say, it is really, it's really crazy though. Because one of the most recent things I've seen that really blew me 
is everybody was on the baby's case about him talking about uh, uh, about gay people, their community and stuff. Like they had such a huge issue with it. They have such a huge issue with it. Like, well, man, I done heard this man rap 50 times about shooting somebody in the head, but nobody had a problem with that though. You know what I'm saying? Like you really got to put the emphasis on on everything. Like, everything social media do do play a big part because you know why you can be whoever you want to be on the internet that would be so crazy about it like with me that's what blow me because i see people post stuff and i'd be like bro i know you in real life that's 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 cap if if anybody on here don't know what cap means that means that's a lie that's false oh, nothing, yeah. like, nothing like that but that's why people be big and, big. and i can social media be a killer, be the biggest oh boy on so I can be all this on social media. Like when people be just receiving themselves, you know, people might have a they might think like if strangers think I'm a killer, respect me. If you want to respect something to get respect. You might have a girl who feel like, oh, if I post this XYZ picture, more men will be attracted to me because they want a man attention, so they do things like that. Yeah, social media do play a big part. You see it every day. Like, you're going to see that every day. Like, to be honest, the type of person I am, I wouldn't even have social media if I didn't get paid off social media. That's how a lot of people book me. So I be in tune with social media, but really, I have the stuff I see be like, it's crazy. Like, this is this is ridiculous. I just get off my phone and go do something else because I be in tune with my real life and my children and what I have going on. Because if the internet then is this, you wouldn't know a lot. You really wouldn't know a lot about what what you think you know about somebody. You know what I mean? And with the music though, I mean, I I don't know. That's just what sells. Like you know what I'm saying? That's just what sells. So I think that's why people still be putting emphasis on that. I want to say something when you said about when the baby you on that end. Just talking about gay people, gay people, and how that blew up. It's because they do. They have a um. A, they're a big community. They, it introduced multi-millions and billions of dollars into the community. But when it comes to our community, the reason is it seems that the only time killing a black person matters is if Trump does it. But if a black man kills a black man or a black man kills a black woman, it's not newsworthy. And and, and that's the part I think that got us and all the this from the beginning on the gender. It's just like where is the outrage? That's the part that's disgusting to me. But the only time you can get upset about a black person being killed is if a police officer does it. That's not acceptable. And um, DJs, I don't, you know, um, one of the things you did, I saw you posted a picture of yourself and your little shorty on his birthday. That's beautiful. <laughs> that is huge. You are a man who is attending to the needs of his son. I have a book I wanted to give you. I need to or you can send me your mailing address. Yes, ma'am. So, so we need to, you know, here's this father-son relationship that needs to be expanded upon. That's what's missing in our community. Kids on daddies just hit it. And then I, I made a comment on the village today that I said that I would not say. And I guarantee you, I'm still not going to say it. But it's about the importance of choosing. Not You can't just blame fathers for not being there. You need to, you need to also ask young women, well, why did you choose this person to be a father in the first place? So, share responsibility. And I, I, I'm leaving this, and I'm not even, no, we, we didn't even touch on what we wanted to touch on. But, um, we're going to have to have a part two. We're going to have to have so. a part two. Um, I was, and I would like to bring, yeah, I would like to bring some teenagers with us, maybe. Yes, yes. And, and you know what, that's what actually it was Vernon Watson's idea to bring a young mind, in it, a young voice. And the first person I thought of was DJ Ziggy. Yeah. Ziggy, I don't know if you know, but I'm, you already got 5,000 people, so I can't even send you a friend request. But I watch what you post. I have watched you since I met you in high school. So when I say the whole you're an influencer, you were an influencer before you became DJ Ziggy, before you became, you know what I'm saying? So you have adults watching you also, like I said, no pressure. But I'm going to give each panel guest uh, 30 seconds 
for closing remarks. And I want to, uh, Chief Randall, I want you to be last. Chief Alexander, you want to go first? Closing remarks, and we are going to have a part two. We have to, we have to, and we got to bring in more young, young people because we can talk all day. And that is, that's what I didn't want the show to be, is another show just talking about it, but to come up with solutions. But I think DJ Ziggy gave us another perspective, another way to think about it. All of us, all of you all had valuable information to share that I think we need a part two. Okay, Chief Alexander, the closing remark, you have 30 seconds. Well, I, I'm still available as I was when I worked uh, as a captain, assistant chief, and chief. Uh, I'm I'm just available now as a consultant. But uh, we have proven practices in this area that will work, that will help reach out to our younger generation. And yes, yeah, about sharing the story. So I'm willing to work with those, uh, whether it's DJ Ziggy and, and and people that he can pull together. Because the other thing is, I'm. Uh, looking for opportunities to empower a younger generation to do what uh, I felt a passion to do at an earlier age, because that's when you're going to get the biggest impact. So uh, I'm looking to partner with others, uh, especially younger generation, uh, to bring some resolution so that we can prevent the next shooting from happening. So uh, I, I do have a website, 3 dalexanderconsultantcom uh, Also, you can contact me at Erico850. Uh, 426 8266, and I'm also on Facebook and social media. I try to stay engaged in that uh, for the purpose of staying engaged with the community. So, thank you for having me on. And you said the website was David Alexander Consultant.com? Yes, 3D Alexander. 3D, okay. 3D Alexander Consultant.com. Okay. 3D, okay, thank you. Uh, Reggie. 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, thank you all for the opportunity. And and thing that resonated with me is that we have to treat the gun violence as a public health issue. Uh, we have to look at it as a public health issue. We have to put all our resources in. But the DJ said about uh, the, the the baby when they talk about the uh, the gays. There was an outcry because they have a uh, coalition. They have power. They have position. We don't have that. We need to get that. And then secondly, we have to focus on two things, education and economics. Education, 80% uh, of a child developed by the age of three. We have to get parents to understand the importance of reading, talking, engaging with their child early and often. But education will drive the economics. And until we can fix that, we have 50% of our kids are dropping out of school and uh, they have no opportunity to get a uh, viable income. We're going to continue to have gun violence. Uh, drug usage and uh, teenage pregnancy. So, education, economics, education, economics. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm all for education. Okay, who, uh, Delaney? Um, I'm so glad that our casual conversation led to this, and I look forward to having another opportunity for us to get together and share and for. I heard like the, your mayor said, intentional conversation, not just another mm -hmm. event, but to have conversation that leads to something. And during the course of this evening, I pray that somebody heard something from somebody that moved them in their heart and want to do something, um, you know, just to reach out, let us know, and we can follow up. And I, I represent myself. I don't represent the school district, just myself. Be that clear. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. DJ Ziggy. Mm -hmm. Um, guess for my close remarks, just like after hearing everything y'all said too though, um and being around a lot, one of the biggest things, like I say. You have to, you have to go back. If you have some motion, if you have, you know, you're, you're, you're doing better than others financially, you have to go back. Cause that's like the, one of the biggest things I used to see all the time. Like you, you could never get nobody to say, Hey, little homie, you should read this book. Cause you know what? You got a chance to do this, you got a chance to do that. Like 
or I ain't never had nobody just off, off the rip come to me like, man, you want to make some money, you want a job and make money the right way. I done had plenty of homies. I done seen my people around me that do this and make me get from around them. Like somebody be quick, like the gun violence. It's so easy to get a gun right now. Like right now, if I make, I can make two phone calls and have this table in front of me full of phones. I promise, because it's just that easy. For one, we got to get that to stop being so accessible. If you got access to the pistols, realize what you got going on, bro. Like, just realize what you got going on. Like, I get it. What, what I know what's going on out in the streets and all that, but you should be more willing to give your little homie or little buddy from your neighborhood this little crash dummy who obviously ain't got no sense some advice or a job before you're willing to just give him drugs or give him a gun. That'd be the biggest thing. I see it all the time, bro. All the time. You don't never really see nobody say, hey, cuz, let's, let's grab that football. Let's let's work on drills. But if, if anything come in heat of the moment or somebody, they know the kids be easily influenced. That's why they're giving the kids the gun. The kids ain't thinking five years ahead, but the adult is, but they'll be like this. Hey, little bro, I give you $500. Go over here and shoot this house up. It's easy, ain't it? It don't take much sense to shoot. That's easy. That's too easy. You see uh, news people things all the time with toddlers killing parents on accident. Like, that's how easy it is to kill somebody. Bro. But you have to go show them, like, no, pause, hold up. For one, if you is out here doing dirt, bro, don't force your dirt on the youth. You're dead wrong for that because they ain't mentally. Bro, I'm t- it's so many things I would have did when I was 14, 15. I'd be looking at myself now like, well, I'm glad I didn't do that. I was like, you ain't, you ain't have no understanding for it. So that's like a big one. Um, I think more people just need to be honest. Parents need to be paying attention to what's going on because nine times out of ten, this gun is in your house. You know what I'm saying? So you need to really have a relationship with your kids because how? How you don't know this? How you got a whole kid living with you? I know kids, you got a whole kid living with you and they got an AR-15 in their closet. Like, how you don't know this? Or they, or they, they, using, your, they using your money, your car, whatever to go do what they're doing. Like, Nah, you gotta show them that ain't that ain't what's going on. They seem that people need to care. That's what you say too. Like police kill somebody, everybody mad. You right? Cause you feel like they supposed to protect us, but really we, at the end of the day, we are we got. We supposed to protect us, but first and foremost for anything. So you need to just be real with yourselves. If you got people around you, influence them. If you see other people around, they be around who they. It ain't nothing to step to them. Because I, I know we only had 30 seconds, but anybody that's around you that look up whatever's going on, bro, keep it good for them, please. Like, because I got so many young dudes be around me, they always tell man, you always on my case, you always fussing on me. It don't be that. I don't be wanting you to go through nothing that I, like I just told you, that, that hurt my heart. My homeboy has to call me and get permission to call me. Somebody I grew up with that I love. This man can't go to no shows with me. He can't go to arenas with me. The student and life good right now. Had somebody been around him and was able to be, the brother be smart of life. Man, we be living great right now. And he regret this every day. He got a kid out here. He can't. He can't go to his kid football game. That's why it be so important to me. People have all these freedoms and and all these resources. Use your resources. If folks be feeling like they don't want to use it away from it. Now they want to do good. Oh, now, nah, man, I should have, man, I should have, man, I should have went to school. Bro. I should have been no dropout, bro. I should have did that. I should have, now nah, my, nah, you need to have that. We need to find a way to implement that to be having, giving folks, one, giving folks a future and having a foreseeable future and just presenting them with opportunities. And I know we got educators on here, but I will also say this it doesn't have to, education does play a major part, but we have to show that other resources too like my man said with economics you got people who have great lives that didn't go to school they truck drivers you got just any opportunity we can show you period that you can provide for yourself and take care of your family and stay from behind bars and we need to write down a list of things you can do and put that out there and start making programs or whatever we can do to get these folks involved quick from the from the youngest age from the youngest age and stick with that's the only way i that's like my remarks on there 
at a young age. And education doesn't necessarily have to be formal. Let me make that clear because I went to college for a year and a half and it wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. But I was raised to read books. So you can get a whole different type of education just by reading. A lot of our young men can't afford college, but they can pick up a book. Go ahead, Delaney. I was going to say, my daughter, she was, she drove 18 wheels. I was so proud of her to see this beautiful black woman with her high heels and about an 18 wheel. But, but she had to get the training. She didn't get to step into a truck. So we have to reframe, you know, what education is. And so mm -hmm. education, it can look like whatever you go through to become a truck driver. Um, but education mm -hmm. is available to any level. DJ, you education. You can't just show up and do what you do. You have to be trained. Yeah. Not right? All you, right. I'm just saying, like, like you said, I guess show them not not just the school way. But yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So that I can send him this little, his little shorty to celebrate his birthday. Cool, I got you. Okay. Wonderful. And thank you for those uh, comments, your closing remarks, uh, Ziggy. And I know I put you on the spot several times tonight, but we appreciate you and, and the thought process and how you enlightened the older minds. And again, I had thank you before you told my son how to DJ. So thank you for that. <laughs> All right. All right. Police Chief Randall, closing remarks. I don't know if we can invite you back since uh, Ziggy said you might have been a deterrence for our viewers tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, me, me and Ziggy going to talk offline. He can't be, can't be uh, clapping my style, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to see each other, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, great, great opportunity to be here tonight. Um, wonderful panel. Um, very, very, very informative um, discussion. Nice pointed question. Um, the question I would ask, where do we go from here? Um, and I think the challenge I pose to everybody is, like I challenge to myself and others, you know, what are you doing? What have you, what did you do today? What will you do tomorrow? What will you do the day after tomorrow for the betterment of our community? And one of the things that we've talked about over and over again was making sure we connect with the youth. So one of the things at the police department that we're gonna, we're gonna pilot this year and with the relationship that's built with our school resource officers is working with each, each high school, DHS, and Washington High School in Workman Middle and working with the youth in there and, and creating opportunities for the youth to have an audience, not only with, with the police, but the audience with the police chief and advise me on matters in their specific communities, in their lives, their situations and how we can work together and create opportunities for the youth to lead some of the challenges, some of the problem solving in the communities. You know, one of the things that, you know, an idea that comes to mind is having uh, probably later on in the year a poetry slam where kids can get together and and, and express their 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 thoughts and beliefs through poetry. So I mean that's been very very successful. But giving youth the voice, I think our kids, our youth, uh, are the key to a lot of the things that we experience. And being able to have that opportunity to to shed light on it and being valued at the level at the level that we are, I think it it it'll be groundbreaking. But um, bringing them, bringing them to the table, and making sure they have opportunities, supporting, uplifting, and bringing you know the positivity to it. But we all have a we all have a role to play, and we all should ask ourselves that that same old question I keep coming back to: What have I done today to make my community a better place? If you can answer that question by answering it with no matter how big or how small, then you are doing your part each and every day. And what was that question again? What have I done today to help my community? Yeah, what have I done today to make my community a better place? That's a very simple to question. My and if, no matter how big or how small, I think we will start to see some changes. One, 
in our own lives as we look in the mirror and being the better version, being the best version of ourselves each day. And that will replicate to others around us, the, the, the culture of positivity. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your closing remarks. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you for your input. Like I said, maybe a part two, um, but let's remember the question. This will also be replayed. And forgive me, I'm not a computer techie and all that. I, I didn't post the link of where people can view it, but I hope it's on you all's pages. I hope you shared it, but I will be replaying it and putting the link to share. It'll, it'll be, uh, Zig, you have something? Yes, I wanted to say that because I, I couldn't find the link at first and then I realized what the problem was. Um, and I, I just, just, you can do it on separate posts. Like my page is open to the public. So you could be from Wichita, wherever, and click on my page and see everything. But I, I couldn't see this exact, this, this broadcast until I became your friend. Like I had to accept your friend request to see it because it was only, uh, oh, really? yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Yes, ma'am. Just wanted to put that out there. Okay. Next time we have to have it okay. to, to the public so when people do share it, it can go ahead and build the audience that we need that we can see more questions. I think that's why, because I know when I clicked on it, it had four views, but when I, I went to Mr. Alexander's page and he shared it, but it said uh, content unavailable. I had to go to your page, accept your friend request, then I could see the actual broadcast itself. It just has to be, you have to hit the same thing on there. You just Public, everyone can be able to put okay so see that's where you come in <laughs> that's where you come in <laughs> but i am going to make it i'm going to figure it out i'm going to figure it out and Vernon watson this is his show pensacola wants to know it is on his page Vernon, where are you can i bring you on as we close i'm bringing Vernon. all right okay Vernon. tell us tell us where this will be aired and now we can watch it in the future. Very watch We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Go ahead, let me unmute him. Okay, go ahead. Watch it. Okay. All right. All right. Can, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you, Reginald, for that because we got lesson learned tonight. Because when we get these what I call the Zoom type meetings, uh, we just really have to educate people on how to do this a little bit. But the next time we do it, we're going to use head headphones and uh, use the mute because it, it it's eliminate the feedback into it. But but I thank y'all for coming on for this program because I I think is is very important that we get the information out about what's happening in our community. Everybody knows what's happening, but nobody knows what causing it and what can we do about it. And I was talking, I was listening to the radio today that somebody was on the radio saying that, but I heard that uh, Vernon and Lavender is planning this show about how, what to do about these young men killing each other. And one suggestion is that well maybe they should invite somebody that been been uh in, incarcerated for the same reason and maybe they can give us a little more insight mm. on why you know the mindset and ziggy put he, he had some very important information on him and i invite young and old to listen to him because of why people do what they do one of the things these things that that, that, that resonated with me tonight that i just really hadn't thought about Pay these, these young and dumb children five hundred dollars to go around and shoot up, and they just—they're not thinking. They just—they just can't think, see how far ahead of them, and they run their own lives for an instant of a gratification, of money, or whatever they think it is, whatever it's gonna hurt. But we gotta have to do this a lot more often, and until we can see we can make a difference here in this community, because it's it just unconscionable. To think about how these young people, young talented people, just just losing their lives over nothing, and so we got to do something about it. And Lavinia and I were talking about it. She was very upset about it. 
she said, Vernon, we're going to have to do something about this. We're going to have to do something. And and I said, well, okay, well, we can do what we can do. We got a platform, and, and let's start with our platform and, and maybe make a difference. It, 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 some people say, well, it might not, but you know you know that old saying about the man was throwing that one grain of sand in the ocean? And then somebody asked you, does it make a difference? Well, what sand did. So we got to continue throwing that sand of grain into the ocean until maybe collectively it may make a difference so but I, I thank you guys and ladies for coming on tonight and Lavender, you schedule another one to one question bro. Where, can, where can we watch it what can people see it at that's okay number one you can it, it is airing as i speak on wbqp tv 12.1 uh you can see it on my youtube channel when when uh, we finish here at any time just go just go to wbqp tv youtube asking to subscribe and you can see it there um you can see it on the facebook page it's, it's streaming live on wbqp live uh facebook page and so forth so um so let me get the link from again. your page they yes. load it in okay okay mm -hmm. yes so that I'll was you all get the link. when i get it up i'll tag you Okay. Okay. And then, and, then, and then if okay. you can ask people to share it, and just like Ziggy said, but add, and then invite them to be your friends so they can see it. So Ziggy, I'm your friend now, right? Your friends, I got it. I accepted it. I really don't. Right. I've mean, <laughs> so many. I don't be seeing until somebody says something, and I have to go back and click. It. Okay. All right, so that is it for tonight. I will find the link and share and tag you all when we replay it. And thank you again. You guys have a good evening. <laughs>